All righty. So this is the uh, rim that we're going to build today in on shape. So let's go ahead and begin. The first step they give us here is to open a new document and set the workspace length unit to millimeters. Begin a sketch on the front plane. So I'm going to open a new tab of on shape. Create a new document. I'll call it wheel rim. I'm going to set my workspace units to millimeters. So the document menu is here. And we'll find workspace units. Change the length unit to millimeters. and then start a sketch on the front plane. So click on the front plane, click on sketch, and then we can push N as in normal on the keyboard to get a normal view of the front plane. Then it's like, okay, draw a bunch of stuff. So let's see what we got here. We've got one, two, three, four circles. So I'll go and draw four circles. Um, they're all concentric, so they're all centered at the origin. And it also says that these two lines here are symmetric about the vertical construction line. So there's this vertical construction line. I'll start with some circles. Okay, so my circle tool. There's one, two, three, and four. I'm going to um, ah, make an extra circle, apparently. Push escape to see if you ever start doing that. I'm going to hide the planes because there's too many lines in there. Okay, then we got a couple of lines. We got a vertical construction line and then a couple of lines that go to the, from the center to the second circle. And they are symmetric about the construction line. So the construction line, so I'm gonna get my line tool and make it construction line. And now I'm gonna make a vertical line from the origin up to the top circle. So I wanna make sure that it's Coincident to that outside circle and also vertical. And then I'm going to make a couple of regular lines that go from the origin out to the second circle. Oh, snap. Look what I did. You notice that? Let me hit escape to get out of my line tool. My, uh, this line here didn't get connected. But if I just hold it and just drag it over there, it'll put that coincident constraint on it. So now if you try to move that line, it's gonna stay there. Oh, and it's already, um, see just by moving it, I can tell it's already given it the symmetric constraint. That's weird, I didn't put that on there yet. Normally to put the symmetric constraint on there, you would need to select um, the two entities that you want to be symmetric and the thing you want them to be symmetric about. And then here's the symmetric constraint. So, so now we've got that. We want to make sure that if you drag one of these lines, it moves both of them and it's always symmetric like that. Okay. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. We did all this. Next. Now we got a bunch of dimensions. So I'll start with this 30 degree angle. So it's 30 degrees. So I'll get my dimension tool to do an angle. You click on the two lines that you're angling between. So click and then click. 
plus 30 degrees. Now I'm going to start from the outside circle because I think mine are kind of small. Um, and I don't want to, like if I start with my little circle and then it ends up being super big or overlapping with the other circles, I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to start with my biggest circle, which is a diameter of 500. And see where that, but see right now it's only 200. So it's going to, it's going to get real big once I tell it to be 500. But the computer was nice enough to kind of stretch everything out with me, right? That was kind of cool of it. So then the next one is 475. And you just start trying to put the dimension somewhere where it's not in the way, somewhere where it's easy to see. You don't have to put it in the exact same spots they put it. Uh, let's see, then we got the 400. And then 150 on the inside. <clears throat> okay, now the diameter was um, 500 millimeters. What would that be in inches? Five hundred millimeters to inches. So these are almost 20s. These are 19.6 inch rims. Okay. So we're almost rolling on dubs. Got all those dimensions. What's next? Rename it main sketch and then accept the sketch. So I'll rename it. Main sketch. Then accept it. Step five, we're going to now create a solid extrude feature with a symmetric end type at a depth of 150 millimeters. So I'm going to kind of tilt my view a little bit because that helps me um, to see my extrude a little better. So we're going to do a, uh, an extrude. We are our end type instead of blind, we're going to do symmetric. Our depth was 150, I think. 150. And then we're going to select the two outermost profiles. So these little two outer rings. New selected, so we're gonna get the outside ring and then one right there. So those two little rings. Now, so like here's the difference: the difference between um, doing symmetric and doing blind. If we do blind, you can see that it only extrudes in one direction away from the sketch. We do it symmetric, our sketch stays in the center, and we want that because we're going to be kind of working from the center out when we build this rim. So I think we've got everything there. We just need to accept that. Now we've got this cool ring. We're going to rename this part wheel rim. So over here where it says part one, we'll right click, rename. And that's it for that slide. <clears throat> now, we're going to need to show the main sketch, and then we're gonna create the wheel hub using an extrude feature. So first thing we're gonna do is go to main sketch and show it. Then we're gonna make an extrude feature with the center circle 
It's also going to be symmetric and a depth of 200 millimeters. And we're using the innermost profile circle. Um, we want the whole circle, right? So extrude, um, symmetric, 200, and we want the circle. So right now it just wants to do the Pac-Man. So you have to go in there and select the little piece of pie to make it the whole circle. And you notice how it's a different color because it's not connected. So it's interpreting it as a different part. See how there's two parts right now? We have wheel rim and part two, which this is part two right here. Um, we're going to check the draft checkbox to make it kind of taper in a little bit. And it's going to be a five degree draft. So over here, this little draft button, we click the draft button. It, right now, it wants to draft it to make it like kind of flare out, make it a little bit wider, but we want to make it a little bit more narrow. Um, so we're going to switch the, the direction, switch the direction of the draft. Watch how it changes when I click on this. So instead of being flared out, it's going to be tapered in. And they said to do five degrees. And symmetric, five degrees, solid. I think we're good. So we will accept that. But like I said, there's two separate parts now in our um, workspace, right? Let's see. Sure to include the triangle profile. Yeah, we did that. And then this little note down here, we will add the hub and rim features together to be one part in the next step. So let's see how that works. So <clears throat> we are going to create a spoke now in this rim. Where So we're going to do an extrude feature, but we're going to do the end type of blind and 25 millimeters. And we're going to select that tri this triangular profile the whole way down, right? And be sure we're extruding towards the front of the part. So... Um, what I want to do in order to in order to make this a little bit easier for me to make sure I'm selecting the right parts of the sketch because it's kind of hard right now. So I'm gonna um, hide the hub right now so that when I do my next extrude, um, what are my I need it to be add blind. And then I need the merge scope here to have wheel rim and part two in it. So I'm going to select add. It's blind. The depth is supposed to be 25. So we already have the right depth. Merge scope. Oh, wait, I need to pick the um, face to. We want that, but we also want that. <laughs> um, then... Merge scope, we want wheel rim and part two. So that this extrude gets merged with both that outer rim and the inner hub so that it all becomes one part. So merge scope right now just has wheel rim. I'm gonna put part two in there. And now when I accept, you can see they're all the same color now. And there's only one part in my um, parts list. So by by selecting the add and putting both of those in the merge scope, um, it made it all be one part. And we can accept what we did. Okay, next we are going to put a draft on our spoke here which basically what's gonna happen is it's going to um, just kind of angle out these sides a little bit more. So we're gonna use the draft feature. We're gonna choose the top face right here as our neutral plane. And then these two sides are gonna be the entities to draft. We're gonna do a 15 degree draft and make sure that the front face 
is smaller than the back face. So we're making the back wider. Okay, so let's check this out. Hide that main sketch again, because it's getting in the way now. Okay, so we are gonna select the draft, the draft button, the draft tool. For the neutral plane, so this is the one that's gonna like act like hinges. Um, the entities to draft, we're gonna do this side right here, so it's gonna fold out a little bit. And then this side here, so it'll fold out a little bit too. And we wanna make it a 15 degree draft. And so I'm looking at the front here. So the front face is the smaller one. The back face will be the bigger one. So I can accept that. Now. And so you can see the front face is smaller. It flared out these two um, edges when we did the draft. And then the back face is the bigger one now. All right, so there we did that draft. Now we want to mirror this onto the other side so it has like that kind of two sides to it. So this is only half of the spoke. We're going to mirror it. We're going to select the mirror feature and then choose feature mirror as the mirror type. The default is part. So let me show you what, it, see how it says feature mirror right here? If we don't change that to feature mirror, it'll only let us select the whole part. And that's not what we want. So what we have to do is we're going to pick the mirror function here. Um, and then it, you notice that it, it starts off as part mirror. And if you don't remember to change it to feature mirror, you're going to have a hard time. You won't be able to select the features from the feature men, menu. Because you want to select, if you look back here, you want to select extrude 3 and draft 1, right? So the extrude of the spoke and then the draft. But if we have it on part mirror, we can't select the extrude or the draft. It won't let us. It'll only let us select the whole part to mirror. But we don't want to do that. We want to just mirror this spoke. So we have to change this to feature mirror. Then it'll let us select features. We want to, feature, we want to select extrude three, which was our spoke, and then the draft. And then the mirror plane is going to be this back face right here. So click in mirror plane, select that back face right there, and you can see that it mirrors those features. All right, so then we are going to add some round, round off these edges here. Um, face of extrude three, that's the front. Face of mirror one would be the back. So we're just gonna select those two faces and do a two millimeter radius fillet around that edge. So, uh, fill it, two millimeter radius, and then we want to select the, um, for entities to fill it, uh, the front of the spoke, which was face of extrude three, and then the back, which is face of mirror one, and then hit the check mark. And so you can see that it applied the rounded edge there. there. All right. <clears throat> Next. Next, we're going to use a, the circular pattern um, function to make a pattern going around here. So this on this circular pattern, we also have to choose feature pattern so that it knows that we're trying to do a feature and not the whole part. So we're gonna pick the, so right, this is the pattern, this is linear pattern. If we hit the drop down menu, there's circular pattern. So then it says entities to pattern, 
we're going to pick extrude three, draft one, mirror one, fillet one, right? So what happens if I just if I just click there? Look, I'm still in part pattern. Arg, I need to change it to feature pattern. Can I just click on the things? There's mirror one. There's extrude three. But I also want to make sure that it gets the draft and the fillet. So it's sometimes easier just to select things from over here. Then for our axis that we're going to revolve around, we're going to pick this circle right here. Um, right now, it's only doing four. That's the default number. We want five. And I think that's it. Yep. So we'll accept that. Now we are going to create a new sketch on the indicated face. This is the front of it. So let's get a front view. Click there. Click on sketch to start a new sketch. And what are we going to sketch? Um, we have a solid circle in the middle, a vertical construction line, and then a construction circle out here. 35 millimeter diameter on the little circle, 90 millimeter diameter on the big construction circle. Both of them centered at the origin. Okay, so circle tool. Now I'm going to push Q or click this button to give me a construction circle. Then I'm going to switch over to my line tool. Notice my construction button is still lit up so I can make my vertical construction line. So this guy needs to have that vertical constraint and the coincident constraint. So I'm going to hit escape and then just make sure it's on there. Okay, good, 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 good. Now I'm going to use my dimension tool to put the dimensions on there. This guy was 35. And this guy was 90. Oops. See, I accidentally clicked. My first click was here. And then my second click, I accidentally clicked on there. So now it wants to put the dimension of between those two circles. I have to hit escape because that's not the dimension I was going for. Let's get my dimension tool back. And I just want this to be 90. Okay, so now that sketch is good. We're going to rename the sketch bolt circle and then accept it. Okay. So now we're going to create this center hole in the hub. So we're going to select extrude and we're going to remove. So that'll cut the certain the hole out. We're going to choose the solid circle from the middle. Select through all as our end. So we need to make it have solid. It needs to say remove through all. And then in the merge scope, make sure it says wheel rim. All right, so extrude. I'm going to pick the inner inside circle here. I need to make it say remove. The end type is going to be through all. Um, anything else that I miss? So you can see it's going all the way through. The merge scope should say wheel rim. We're good. So now we've got that hub, that hole through our hub. So 
So next we're going <clears> to <throat> drill one of the holes for the bolts. So we're going to show the bolt circle sketch because when we um, did this extrude, it automatically hid that sketch. So we need to show it again. The front view here. Then we're going to create the bolt holes using the hole feature. So this part is going to get crazy. So we're going to choose the end point from the vertical construction line as the point to place. Then there's all these things to fill out. So I'm going to go kind of slowly through those. So first we are going to, so here is the hole tool. Um, the first, oh, see, I already did this, so they're all set up to what it was before. This thing is lit up, so it says sketch points to place hole. Um, we're going to just click on that. Then you have to go through, mine are already there because I kind of worked through this one already, but it'll probably start off like this. Let's see. It'll probably, okay, so it'll start off saying like simple, so you'll change that to, um, oh, here in the instructions, hole style, counter bore. So hole style is going to be counter bore. Then in the next box, end type is going to be through. End type is through already, so we're good. Then, see now, this could have been, this might just, this probably comes like that when you first use the whole tool. So then stand the next box, we want to select ISO. So it says standard there, we're going to select ISO. Then for hole type, clearance, okay, that's already there. Size, M10. So size, we'll do M10. Fit is normal, fit is normal, and then here the merge scope is set to wheel rim and then accept. So merge scope is set to wheel rim, so cool, I'm gonna accept. So now we've got this, this is a counter bore, so it's, you have like this sunk out, drilled out area for the bolt to rest in, but you don't have it on the back side, right? Because the bolt's just coming out of there. Okay, what's next? Next, we are going to do a circular pattern to bring these circles around, to bring these holes around. Okay, so we are going to go back to our circular pattern tool. So entities to pattern, we're going to select uh, this hole. Oh, uh, look, it's part pattern. I have to change it to feature pattern. I figure I realized that when it wouldn't let me select the hole. So once I change it to feature pattern, now it'll let me select the hole. The axis, for the axis, we can pick just any one of these circles. And then we need to make it five holes and equal spacing, and we're good. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide the bolt circle sketch because I don't need to see that anymore. Okay, now here's another one that can cause some, some confusion and be super fun. So show the main sketch. Come back over here and show my main sketch. To remove geometry from the rim to fit a tire, so we're going to like cut away this middle part of the rim in here so that there's like a, an edge sticking up for the tire to rest on. We're going to do an extrude feature. So we're going to do extrude. The options are going to be set to solid and remove. And we're going to choose the outermost profile from the main sketch as the sketch region to extrude. So let's start by that with doing that. Going to do extrude. I am, so faces and regions to extrude. It's supposed to be the outermost region of that sketch. It's really hard to pick that though, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the wheel rim so that I can only see the sketch. Then it's a lot easier to pick that outside ring. 
So now I can um, unhide. Uh, notice how it starts, it says part two down here, like we're starting a new part. That's because I hadn't checked remove yet. Now it knows it's cutting um, away material instead of adding new material. So this one's going towards the back, it's fine. Okay, so what else do we need? Okay, so I got that outermost rim, that outermost ring selected. It says remove. What else do we need to do? Choose the outermost probe, we did that part. Select up to face as the end type and then choose the face indicated. So it's going up to like this outside edge on whichever whichever direction we're doing it. We're going to do it in both directions. So this one's going towards here. So I am going to change the end type from blind to up to face. Then I'm going to select this face. So then it cut, you can see now it's like cutting that all the way up to there, but I want to offset. It. I don't want it to cut all the way up there. I want to offset it. So we're going to check offset distance and input 20 millimeters. So I'm going to click offset distance. And you can see that now there's a little bit of this left. It didn't cut all the way anymore, but we only want it to leave 20 millimeters, not 25. So that should come, that should make that a little bit shorter here. Uh oh, I accidentally hit enter when I wasn't supposed to. So I'm still working on this extrude, but notice like I hit enter and then that thing went away. That's like hitting the green check. So I need to get back into here. So I'm gonna double click on extrude. So now I'm back in here because there's another part. I need to go the other way as well. So the next thing, this one has a lot of words on it. Check second end position. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So down here, second end position, check that. Um, what is it trying to do there? It's trying to cut in the same direction maybe. So do I need to flip that direction? Yeah, I need to flip that direction. I need to change this to up to face. I need it to go to that face with an offset distance of 20. Now I've got my rim cut out for the tire notch, you know, for the tires to go in there. Make sure merge scope is set to wheel rim and then we're good. Okay, next we are going to do some chamfers. So chamfers, it's kind of like a fillet, but instead of putting a round edge, it puts a flat edge. And so we are going to do it to the ring around the, the edge of the hub, the inside edge of the rim, the outside edge of the rim. That's the same as right here and right here. Then we're going to do the inside e top edge, inside top edge, and then this part here. And that will get all those, all those sides. So here's how we do that. I am going to select the chamfer tool. Entities to chamfer. Wait, let's go back and see what the distance was. Eight millimeters. So I'm going to set that to eight. Then entities to chamfer. I want this outside circle here. I want this circle and that circle. So now you can see that it's got that one, this, this edge right here done, and this edge here. So we all wanna also do that one, that one, that one, and that one. Oh, and don't forget this one. So 
we've got all of those, and then we hit OK. What sketch is hurting my eyes right now? Main sketch. Uh, then we are going to do a fillet. And notice that both of these say edge of extrude five. So we need to make sure that's what it says because it's kind of hard to tell from this picture which circles they want the fillet on. Um, <clears throat> but you can tell from here edge of extrude five. So I'm going to get the, oh wait, what was the radius? Five. So here's my fillet tool. Five uh, inch radius or five millimeter radius. And then the entities to fill it are, so if I click on this one, that's called edge of chamfer one. That's not the one I want. So it must be this one, edge of extrude five. Nice. And then so, so it's this one, not that one. Edge of extrude five, nice. So now if you take a straight on view, you can see that it's rounded in there. Next, we are going to make it out of aluminum 1060. So, Right click on wheel rim, assign material, aluminum 1060. And then if you want to, you can change the appearance, you know. Oh, we already did that. Edit appearance. They don't have like a really good chrome color, do they? Maybe we got solid gold rims. They're shiny gold. <laughs> Do I want to hide that other sketch? There, look at that sweet looking rim. And then the last thing, look, they give you the mass in kilograms. So we're going to need to change our, our document settings to kilograms and then check to see if we got it right so <clears throat> workspace units mass unit kilograms check and then when you click on wheel rim and then display mass properties i get 36.364 hmm, that's not what i got last time Wonder what I did differently. And then that's it, it's checking, right? So let's see, maybe it was, I thought I had different, 36 point. Thirty-six point three six. hmm, that's so weird. Why is it different? I don't think I did anything different. 36 point, that's the one it's closest to. Yay, we were close. 